Hi, we're going to talk about estimating, analogous and parametric estimating of the actual techniques. And we're also going to talk about the harder part and see a project manager do it, and that is defending the estimates in meetings with your project sponsor and some other sharpshooters who may come. So we'll see a project manager present her estimating documentation and defend the estimates she comes, comes up with. And then at the end of the movie, I'll show you how we do all the, um, the math. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hello? Hey, Dan, how's it going? What happened? They killed you about the estimates? Oh, that can't be. Who are these guys? Ah, oh, the new controller she brought in? And some new estimating consultant? Thanks for the heads up. I'll be ready. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. I'm, I'm just talking about cutting the blubber. Your project managers are sloppy. Then. Are you ready for me? Shilda and Harlow, I'd like for you to meet Maxine Klein. She is our superstar project manager, and she is great on the big ones. I've heard a great deal about you, Maxine, and your big projects with the that price tag. We'll start putting them on a diet starting today. Well, we can certainly talk about my estimates and trade-offs, but let's not lose sight of the business value we have to produce. That is so true. We need these projects to build the company. We shall see. Maxine, show us what you've got for us. Well, as you know from the advanced materials I sent you, we're here to discuss the XJ-17 product. The project scope is to deliver $3 million in new sales annually with a 16% profit margin, a project budget of $525,000, and a duration of six months. That gives us an annual profit of $480,000 the return on investment is over three years, is over 30%, and the payback period for the project is 1.2 years. Another home run for Maxine? That is going to make a big difference in our company bottom line. Don't you agree, Sheldon? Project managers pull those estimates out of the air. Make them up, actually, with, with no factual foundation at all. See, that's why you need my parametric estimates. Look, I have projections and estimates for any legitimate project activity you could possibly imagine. Our project managers would never fabricate their numbers. They always make really good sounding presentations. Then you get the big cost overruns at the end. So where do your estimating figures come from? Fantasy land? I like to work with something even better. Analogous estimating. And I use published estimating data if I have nothing better. But we carefully archive our data cost and duration and hours data from each project. Then we can use analogous techniques and data from our own previous projects. That's the gold standard in estimating data. Certainly, we're at the initiation phase, and there is risk until we do more planning. But the cost numbers are reliable. The proof is in the pudding. Your archive data is just perpetuating the bloated estimates from your previous projects. No, I can check the archive data against the actual project. You can see the detail behind the parametric data. Let me show you the XJ-17 cost estimates and the adjustment factors that I used with data from previous projects. As you and Arlo may not know, Sheldon, we have been doing new product launches for years, and we have a great deal of data on the actual cost of previous launches. For the major deliverables, I've used analogous estimating. For one brand new deliverables, you see the parametric estimates. And you also have an abysmal, abysmal, history of cost overruns 
on those project launches? There have been three. But if you understand analogous estimating, then you know that I'm getting the cost estimates for the XJ-17 project from the actual costs of previous projects, not their original estimates. Let's look at the detail by phase and adjustment factors. On phase one, we had three IT projects with a similar project development efforts. The estimate is based on the average of those three plus a 5% increase because of the larger scale of XJ-17. For the construction of the warehouse XJ-17 requires, I used two published construction industry factors for air-conditioned warehouse space, and you see that the rate was a $56 per square foot, and we have 4,000 feet, and that yields the cost of $224,000. You can also see that we have used analogous estimates based on our previous projects expenses, distribution expenses, and production costs. Analogous estimates based on our own previous projects are obviously the best source of data. How does this compare with your data, Arlo? Uh, well, um, actually I, uh, I, I don't seem to have a rate for uh, that kind of uh, warehouse space need to have more than one two on your estimating kit. Maxine, very impressive and very thorough, I might add. I think this is one project we're not going to have to worry about. Don't you, Arlo and Sheldon? Let's talk a little bit about the two kinds of estimates. We'll the first of them is analogous estimates. That's where we use data from previous projects or phases of those projects that are similar to the project we're working on now. And just as an example, if the previous project phase took 41 days and we think the current project will take 10% uh, more, it's 10% harder, um, we factor the old estimate up by 10% and that's the new analogous estimate. We're also going to talk about parametric estimating. That's where we use a published rate. And there, as an example, we might have um, a duration of 20 minutes for each interview we conduct. And that comes from previous uh, projects. We find that we have 30 interviews to conduct in this uh, project, and we simply multiply the two to get the 6,000 minutes that this will take. Those are the two kinds of estimates and how we prepare them.